Here we are. Jesus is the reason I've been seeing that happen here. And we've been saying Jesus is the reason for the season. And even when the youth were getting ready, I saw Mother Fleming, Jesus, and they, we did, it was going back and forth like an old call and response, Mother. And to see the enthusiasm and the vim and the vigor when we're looking at the season, that without Jesus, there would be no reason for the season. He is the reason for the season. And as we've been going through this series of sermons, why the nativity? Today we're going to look at why Mary? Why Mary? So if you can, I ask that you stand for the reading of the Lord's word. We are going to go to Luke chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 28 today. We're going to go 28 through 35. Again, the subject is going to be, why Mary? As we like to say, if you're there, say amen. If you're not, I heard Sister Dave say, please wait. You'll see these words pinned. And the angel came to her and said, greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. But she was deeply troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. Then the angel told her, do not be afraid. Mary, Mary for you have found favor with God. Now listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you will give him the name Jesus. Verse 32, he will be great and will be called the son of the most high God. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary asked the angel, how can this be? Since I have not been in sexual relations with a man. The last verse for today, the angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. As you're still standing, let's bow for a word of prayer. Most High God, as I like to say, of heaven and earth and everything in between. Dear God, we now have the awesome opportunity today to preach your holy and divine word. Lord, we ask that you give us a spiritual heart to receive this thy word. And Lord, we ask that you give us spiritual ears and a spiritual mind to continue to dive deeper in your word each and every time we have an opportunity. Father God, we again say that you must increase, that this speaker must decrease, because Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to look at the human vessel that you use to carry your son, Jesus Christ, in the form of Mary. Lord, we praise you, we honor you, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you thanks. It's all in the dynamic, holy, and precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Why Mary? Last week... It was why Joseph. And many things this week crossed my mind, Minister Bruno, as we were putting this together. When you look at Luke 1 and 38, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is known better than any other female character in the Bible. 
um, she had been given, or, and really there's no other woman since that time that was as present her since the days of, in Bethlehem. And again, when we looked at verse uh, 28, blessed you are among women. Now think about everything Mary had to go through in order to bring forth our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Some folks might have seen that as not being a blessing. As we look at three points today, there's much to learn from Mary. Point one, Mary teaches us the submission of godliness. Again, Mary teaches us the submission of godliness. Behold, again in Luke 138, behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let me be or let me do according to your word. Think about that. Mary gets this message from the angel. Instead of saying, why me, Lord, or asking a hundred thousand questions, Sister Velma, Mary in Luke 138 says, let it be according to your word. How many of us have a let it be in our spirit, Lord? Let it be no matter what you say, Lord, to me, I'm going to do what you say. Think about that. And then the angel departed from her. Um, I'm not going to spoil or take away the thunder, which we'll see next week, but our young people, Mother Fleming are going to do something, and it resonated with me as we were putting this message together, what they were doing, and hopefully you will get a chance if you tune in out there in social media or if you're here in the sanctuary next week. So I'm not going to take away the thunder, but I'm letting you know, Mother, that it went right along with the message that we prepared today, that Mary submitted to the awesome will of God. From the very beginning, Sister Jackson, Mary's relationship with Jesus was one about submission. I know, Sister Henderson, in our modern day vernacular, we don't have, we have a big problem with the word submission. We have a problem with the word surrendering. When the angel Gabriel came to Mary with this news, she's going to be the human mother of the Messiah. Mary, listen at this had no warning, she had no preparation, she had no timeline or no precedence to go back and look at, Sister Dave. I know in your, your field, precedent and law sets standard. Mary had none of these things. The entire dialogue and what that took place with the angel took place in Mary's home. When the angel intervened in her life, Mary learned that she would a son and that she would call his name Jesus and she was told this birth would be unlike any other child ever born she was to have a child without having a relationship with the man he would be this child would be conceived by the Holy Spirit as I went through the annals of time there's never been another birth like this ever Thank God, because if Jesus, would, if Joseph, which we talked about last week, would have been his father, there would be an issue because we all still would be lost. Amen. See how Mary responded to the news that she was to become the mother of the Messiah. Again, hold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. In other words, Lord, I don't understand this. Have you ever been in a situation where you said, Lord, I don't understand this, but I'm still going to do it your way. I don't completely comprehend what's going on. I don't completely understand this situation, but whatever you desire, do you all have a, Lord, whatever you desire spirit? Lord, whatever, Sister Jackson, Lord, whatever you desire to be unto me according to your word, Pastor Fleming. Ladies and gentlemen, that's where we get in trouble with our saved selves. We want to do it our way. How many of y'all old enough to know in here, and I saw Mother Fleming talking about control last night. 
How many of y'all want to be in control? Yet, but here, again, you can't be in control if God is the one orchestrating the plan. You got to let go and let God. As you look at Mary here, Mary is saying, Lord, I don't understand what is about to go on here, but nonetheless, I'm going to do it your way. Mary must be wondering in her heart, why have I been favored to be the mother of Jesus? Why me? Think of, can you see Mary? The reasons why Mary was chosen, we don't know. But God knows why she was chosen. But it is clear from studying her life and what little information we do have that Mary was not a random selection. Mary was not a random selection. Think about this. Mary was an ordinary small time girl, but she was obedient and courageous. Obedient and courageous. Think about this. From her son, we learned she was a woman of scripture, a woman of faith. How many women do we have of faith? Think about that. Mary was a woman of faith. When I looked at the scripture, I believe Mary at that time, Mary was praying. Again, Praying. How many of us are praying? How many of us are taking that time to say, Lord, this is your time. I'm going to be in prayer and supplication with you. Don't answer that question. It's rhetorical in nature. <laughs> she should be a virgin that the glory of the Lord might be miraculously demonstrated. Wow. Think about Mary being picked out to be the human vessel from which the Lord Jesus Christ would come. She should be a peasant in keeping with the humble nature of the Lord's birth. I wrote in my notes, we sing this song, I, you, we used to sing it, humble me, Lord, and let me do thy will, not my will. How many of us have a humble enough attitude like Mary to say, Lord, use me in your service? Mary was all of these things. She honored and obeyed the Heavenly Father, providing his Holy Son with a home which he could emerge and launch the work that would be defined and to assist all of human society. The child, Jesus, think about this, toddled behind Mary in his infancy, the cross, from his beginning there in Bethlehem to the cross, Mary was with him. That also lets me know that many of the mothers, I heard Pastor Fleming talking to other Pastor Fleming the other day, and she said the one thing that y'all didn't like, Jamar, was a lecture. I see, I was in, I use everything, mother. They didn't like a lecture, so guess what y'all got, Jamar? Y'all got the very thing y'all didn't like a lot of times in that household. But here's what I know, young people, listen to me. Those things that you sometimes don't like that you, you have going up in your parents' house are the very things that you need once you get out of their household. Again, I looked at that relationship. I'm going to talk about a child-mother relationship here pretty soon. Mary teaches us about the submission of godliness. There comes a moment when God asks each of us to do something that we should obey. My question is, what is your answer going to be? And we face the same dilemma that Mary faced. Maybe not exactly the same, but we face some of those same dilemmas. Will we accept it or turn from it? Brother Russ, that's the question. Will we accept it or turn from it? When God asks me or you to do something that may be hard, 
and certainly something you don't understand is our prayer, Sister Bam, are going to be one that says, oh, within you, the spirit within you that says, Sister Peyton, I'm going to rise up in obedience in the word like Mary did. Be unto me according to your word, Lord, whatever you want. I am your servant. Lord, I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. In this case, that's what Mary was saying. I will do what you ask me to do, when you ask me to do it, how you ask me to do it, Lord, I'm available. How many of us have an uh, I'm Lord, I'm available attitude mindset? That's point one. Point two, Mary teaches us the surprise of godliness. Mary teaches us not only submission that we talked about in point one of godliness, she teaches us the surprise of godliness. The adventure of walking with Jesus Christ is the greatest adventure you and I will ever know on this earth. Now, I will say this, heaven will be better. But nothing before will be as great as this adventure we're on with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To know, listen at this, ladies and gentlemen, to know that you are related to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that the creator of the universe has sent his son to live within you and your life. That you have a direct communication to Almighty God. The old saints used to say his line is never busy. Call him up and tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Think about that. And that you can fellowship with him and that he, listen at this, will direct, guide, strengthen, and be with you. This is a truly great adventure. But it is also full of surprises. I should have got more amens than that. The word of God tells us that when you walk with the Lord, he does not always inform you of the distant future. How many of y'all always want answers? Are y'all like some of these kids? Why, 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 right? It's sort of like he does things on a need to know basis. Isn't that just the way it is? on a need-to-know basis. And this was the way it was for Mary. Mary's whole relationship with Jesus Christ was a relationship of surprise. When Gabriel made his startling announcement to Mary concerning the birth of Jesus, here is Mary's first response. When she saw him, we read it, when she saw him, she was troubled, saying, considering what? type of greeting was this. Come on, ladies, put yourself in Mary's position for a second. Here you are praising and worshiping, and here the angel Gabriel comes and gives you this announcement you were not expecting. Think about this. Mary was engaged to Joseph. We talked about this last week. Mary is in the throne of putting this whole marriage situation together. Now she gets this amount. Talk about surprise. Yeah, surprise. Yeah, that old Gomer Pyle thing, right? Mary had no preparation for this assignment. God surprised her with this message of his plan for her life. Mary was planning something for her life, but do you all know that God has a plan for your life? The question is, are we going to follow his plan or our plan? Listen to this. And when the shepherds told Mary and Joseph what the angel had said about Jesus' birth, she became quietly prehensive. We read this in Luke chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. And all those who heard it marveled at the things or those things which had been told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. 
Mary collected all of these truths and deposited them, deposited them within the deep recesses of her heart. She did not discuss them with others. She just thought about them through herself. So again, as I was here with the young people, what came to my mind was, Mary, did you know? Y'all know that song. Think about it. Mary, did you know that when you've kissed that son, you've kissed the very face of God? Mary, did you know that son that you carried from the start to ladies, y'all know, I, I've been there in that delivery room, right? And I'm not going to tell y'all what was said about me and to me. I'm not, that's not my sermon today. But Mary, think about that. Carried that child, Jesus, and she held all of that within herself. Have you ever had a moment when Almighty God speaks to you or says something that you can't explain? It causes you to pause and ponder what God has said. Like Mary, we often find ourselves surprised on our walk with God. And like Mary, we do not have a blueprint for our lives or those of our children. Think about that. No blueprint. You know you cannot build any building, house, or anything like that, Peyton, unless you have plans, specs, and sometimes there are change orders. When we're dealing with the Lord, you don't have the privilege of having all those things. But here's what I do know. He has all the answers. And if your hand is in his hand, you can make it without having all the information that you need or want. Think about this. No blueprint, no plans, none of that stuff. And again, but when we submit, ah, there's that word again. When we submit to the Lord by faith, we discover he always is there for us. Not sometime, not three quarters of the time. He is always there for us. He hears our prayers and he meets our needs. Think about that. He hears our prayers and he meets our needs. Point three. Mary, in this case, you say, why Mary did it? Mary teaches us the suffering of godliness. Yeah, mm, is right, Sister Vama. Many times we don't want to suffer through nothing. Truth be told, right? We want every day to be sunshine. Right? Thank you, Mother. We want every day to be sunshine. But see, I'm always reminded. New Edition had this hit song, Can You Stand the Rain? And Johnny Gibbs' part, Sister Sherry was, he had that melody part, right? And they said, stormy days will, or sunny days, they will come. But the question is, can you stand the rain? This we know for sure, right? As Christians, I'm going to get to it here in a second, can you stand the suffering that you got to go through? Because when we look at Jesus, Jesus had to suffer for you and me. Mary had to suffer some things. Think about all the folks in her hometown. Yeah, Mary, you're pregnant. Something going on here. I don't know what the mail system was back there. It was the post? They, maybe they said it was the postman. I don't know. But it was somebody. Imagine everything Mary had to go through. The ridicule. Check this out. Maybe from some of her own family members. Thank you, Sister Vet. <laughs> Mary teaches us 
the submission of godliness and the surprise of it all. But finally, we need to pause from the joy and the gladness of Christmas and remember that Christmas, when we look at it in the meaningful light and texture here, that the fact that the blessing and not the ending, what I'm trying to tell you is Christmas by itself is a beautiful story. Yes. But when we put Christmas together with Resurrection Sunday, listen to me. But when we put Christmas together with Resurrection Sunday, we realize that the cradle and the grave have a straight line drawn between them, that Christmas comes more profound when you understand this meeting. So Friday night, as I'm up here on stage with the young people, we're celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But again, that direct line comes to on Resurrection Sunday because think about this if he never came you and I still would be lost if he never came minister Dave he, we, we, you and I still would be lost and the story has become more profound as I saw those young people doing what they were doing mother Fleming in honor of Jesus being the reason for the season I was sitting there thinking, they asked me to be a part of it, but now, right, Sister Barino, I'm the one getting the blessing from being a part of what I was asked to be in. Mary also teaches us the suffering of godliness. We move from the announcement of Jesus' birth to the agony of his death. Think about this. There's no reason for the cradle if there isn't a cross. And also, the transition from the birth of Jesus to his death. Think about this. Jesus Christ was born to die for you and I, for the sins that you and I have committed. He came, he was born to die. That's the reason he came to earth. So again, Dick, as I'm sitting there and all the, all the things that were going on, I thought about this, Brother Mike, that he came through 42 generations to save all that were lost. It had more meaning. It had more context. It had given me more value. Jesus, seven statements from the cross as he was dying. The third one we'll take a look at. Jesus, therefore, saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, Hold your mother. And from that time forward, John had Mary in his house. Look at John 19, verses 26 and 27. It's amazing to me that Jesus turned to John in one of his last moments on the cross and he had concern for the well-being of his mother. The well-being of his mother. And the scripture said that he left, when, he left the, when they left the place of the crucifixion, John took Mary into his own home. Think about this. This was one of the most tender moments in the New Testament. It reminded me of myself that that relationship between a mother and a child. I know the relationship between our Heavenly Father is one that's deeper and better, but again, Mr. Velma, when I look at the relationship between a mother and a child, and to think about Jesus saying, I'm not going to be on the scene right now, but 
Mary, my mother still needs to be taken care of. And I want to say to each and every one of us, or at least I can speak for me. I had the privilege and honor of having a mother who y'all know I tell the stories a lot. Yes, she was tough on me. No doubt. But I'm also reminded, Sister Jackson, of some of those intimate times. When, as I was going through some of her things, and she passed back in 2019, and as I looked at some of the highlights in my life, she was there. I looked at some pictures, and I saw the day that I graduated from college the first time. It was on Mother's Day. I also happened to have the privilege of being born on her birthday. So again, I go back to the connection that a mother has with a child. And even on that day, with my brain oozing out of the side of my head, she said, you messed up my birthday. Now here you are messing up Mother's Day. And thirdly, when are you going to get your master's? It was always a teaching moment and opportunity, and it was special. I even remember taking classes in the summer, and we used to meet halfway on State Route 224. And one day she brought a peach cop, one of my favorites. But again, what I'm saying is, think about that relationship between Mary and Jesus. Look at it. Do you remember when Jesus was taken to the temple by his parents and presented to Anna and Simeon? That can be found again in Luke chapter 2, verses 34 through and 35. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rise of many in Israel. Can you see Mary hearing that? That her son that she gave birth to is going to have to go through all of this for each and every one of us? Again, I'll ask any mother in here, would you give up that son or would you give up that daughter for the sins of many? The, the word is a resounding no as I see a lot of mothers in here shaking their heads. Think about this. Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rise of many in Israel. With this sign, think about this, a sword would pierce through the very soul of Mary. Can you look at Mary's thoughts and her heart as this whole prophecy has been given to her? This prophecy was given to her and then it came to place some 30 years later. Mary had to go through that. It's one thing you all to hear it, but when you have to go through it, when you have to live through it, think about this. Some of y'all mothers know where I'm getting where I go here with this. When you had to stay up with that child, when that child was sick, and that fever wouldn't break, and you couldn't get no rest. Why? Because that child that you gave birth to was sick as a mother, as a caregiver. Can you see what Mary was going through? Why Mary? Mary, listen at me here. Mary knew more pain in her life than most of us would ever know. Think about this. She knew about the godliness of suffering. The day Jesus was crucified, Mary experienced the fulfillment of Simeon's words. Can you see that sword going through her soul? As she looked up on that cross, James Stryker, a writer of New Testament truth, has written some wonderful books about the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Describing this moment 
in Mary's life, he wrote this. There Jesus hung before her eyes, but she was helpless. His wounds bled, but she dared not touch them. His mouth was parched, but she could not moisten them. The nails pierced her as well as him. As a mother, you all can feel things, and I'm not saying father, fathers, we do count, but mothers feel some things that are different than what we feel as fathers. When something happens to that child, it's like it's happening to you, mothers. Can you see everything was going on? It was happening to Mary in real time. It wasn't a delay. It was in real time. The thorns around his brow were a circle of a flame around her heart. Listen at this. The babe of Bethlehem, the boy of Nazareth, the brawny workman of a carpenter, the gentleman from Galilee, the teacher without equal, the mighty man of mercy and miracles, the humble man of patience and grace, her son before her very eyes was in pain and agony. Why Mary? Jesus grew up like other children grew up. Think about the memories of his early days. No doubt they played through Mary's mind as she stood there watching the awful apparent ending of his life. Think about Mary. This was all a part of her life. She remembered those moments. Can you see Mary? The very hands and the feet that she once held Jesus as an infant are now nailed to the cross. Can you see Mary suffering? Listen at this. The disciples that he handpicked, many of them gone, left, friends who initially said Jesus will be with you, gone. They forsaked him. The nations rejected him. But his mother, just like a great mother, a mother's going to be there when nobody else will be there. Can you see Mary? She's right there going through all of this. In these two snapshots of Mary, when we look at his birth and his death, we're reminded that God wants us to learn. Uh-oh, here we go. As my dad used to say, first of all, you got to learn to listen so you can listen to learn. And when I was younger, I, Sister Velma, I didn't get that. You got to first learn to listen so you can listen to learn. What God wants us to learn from the people from the Bible is this. And also from Mary, we have to learn to submit. We have to learn submission of godliness and its surprises. And here's the tough lesson. The lessons we don't want to learn is the lesson of suffering. We don't want to learn that lesson. We want to go around that lesson. We want to go and do anything deep without going through some suffering. As I was standing there with you, Pastor Fleming, just the other day, Pastor Fleming said it was something, and, and correct, and I, might be, I might not exactly get it how you said it, Pastor, but what he said was when he had to go through a suffering situation, he went somewhere in his mind. Think about that. He didn't say he wanted to avoid suffering, but there was something in his capacity I even want to say, Pastor, it was something maybe the Lord gave you to help you deal with everything you had to go through. So again, us, when the suffering comes, don't try to get around. We have to understand that some things are the Lord's process. We can learn from the suffering. It's a part of life. We either embrace it or we learn from it. Or we spend our entire existence here on earth fighting against something that we can never overcome. Our Lord suffered. 
Mary suffered, and we also will experience the suffering that comes with living. Think about this. We have much to learn from this godly woman. Again, why Mary? Here's the remarkable thing as it relates to Mary. Mary was the mother of Jesus, but she needed Jesus to be her savior as much as each and every one of us. I'm reminded of my mentor's wife, Sister Harper. One time she said that in such a way. Think about that. Jesus came through and Mary carried Jesus in her womb, but, G but Mary still needed Jesus to be a savior. And my question to you all is, do y'all need Jesus to be your savior too? Again, Mary was the mother of Jesus. She needed him to be savior just like each and every one of us. The magnificent reveal of this truth is found in Luke chapter 1, verses 46 and 47. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. My question is, are you rejoicing? Are you rejoicing that he came? I'm almost done. As fantastic as this is, the Savior was born again in the womb, the womb of Mary, but also Mary needed to be, he needed to be born in Mary's heart. And the Savior whose birth we celebrate during this season, musicians, you guys can come this way, and the Savior whose birth we celebrate during this season is the same Savior that we need to have born in our hearts as well. He comes into our hearts. Aren't you glad that he came into your heart one day? I don't know what your day was or is, but for me it was one Sunday morning. And here's what I know about my life. It has never been the same since. Because he came into my heart. Not only did he come into my heart, I accepted him as my Lord and my Savior. Now, did that mean every day going forward, Brother Mike was going to be sunshine and I was going to have my feet up eating bonbons? Nope. Sister Peyton, it wasn't going to be that way. But here's what I do know. Brother Russ, because we accepted him, doesn't it make life, even during the tough times, a little bit easier to handle? That he said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. And to say, in other words, Jesus says, I got you. I got you. No matter what you go through, I got you. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to take care of you. When everybody else is gone in those midnight hours, I'm going to be with you. So as I close, here's the question that I want to ask. Today, have you invited him to come into your heart Take up residence with you. The doors of the church are open as Brother Fleming brings us a selection. May we all stand. Like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do I could search for eternity long and find there is none like you 
about this thing. You say, there is none like you. Say, there. There is none like you. Oh, 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 no one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity long and find there be is none like you. One more time, we're going to sing. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none. There is none like you. Oh, 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 no one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. And find there is none like you. Maybe see. Okay, True Light, one of our young people, she said she didn't want to talk on the mic. I said, you don't have to. Now, what she said to me was, I want to be baptized. Hallelujah. And I asked her, I said, that's all I need to hear. And that she believed that Jesus came to save her. Y'all don't get it. Y'all don't get how I feel right now. Y'all don't understand how I feel right now. When you work with young people and you see many of them destroying themselves before they have a chance to make it, and to see this young lady come and say she want to be baptized because Jesus came for her, that touches my heart. And see, I've been noticing her and the rest of them. And I saw her out here dancing, Mother Fleming, on Friday night. And here's what I can tell you, young lady. God can use you mightily. And you have training at home. You have a great support system at home, OK? And you keep doing what God wants you to do. There's no secret what he can do with your life. Okay, because I stand here as a living witness to let you know God can use anybody, but he just needs a willing heart. So how do we receive her, church? One more time. One more time.
Yeah, let's give him a ho- let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. 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 You guys may be seated just real quick before I bring Sister Davenport up. See, sometimes you have to remember. Sister Dave, I remember being there ages. I remember, Sister Valma, church was a part of integral, instrumental part of my life. See, when I talked about Mary, I'm reminded that I had a mother who taught me about the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I had that mother who said, it's not an option. You are going to worship every Sunday. You're going to be active. You're going to be involved. You are going to know the Lord. So I'm reminded when I see you young people that one time I was a young person. Again, you made my day, touched my heart. Hallelujah. Let's bring Sister Davenport for the announcements. I know she's somewhere in that house just jumping around. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. At this time, it gives me the privilege of extending to you the opportunity to give to our ministry. Amen. We have so many different ways that you can give here at True Light. Um, Whether you are in this room or not, you can give via Cash App. You can give via our church app, where you can also go back and listen to all the sermons that have been preached here at True Light. Um, you can text to give, and you can also mail us a check here to the church. Amen. If you're in the sanctuary with me today, you can deposit your tithes and offerings in the receptacles on the stage and know that each and every cent is used toward the upbuilding of his kingdom. Amen. Amen. So next Sunday is Christmas Day. Amen. And if you enjoy what the young people did today, you just got to wait till next Sunday. So I, I really want to invite all of you who are watching from home to come, come and be in the sanctuary next Sunday. Because what the young people are going to to present to us is so powerful. If you can be here, be here. You do not want to miss it, amen? So on next Sunday, we will not have Sunday school. But young people, we need you here at nine o'clock so that you can start to prepare and get into your costumes and get ready for your presentation, amen? 
Um, the church will, will be open probably around 8.30 or 9, so we, we invite people to come on in and listen to the, to the music that Derek plays, and he gets the atmosphere just right for worship. Amen? Amen. And then we will have service beginning at 10 o'clock as usual, but there will be no Sunday school. Amen? And then um, watch night. December 31st, we will have watch night service here at True Light beginning at 10 p.m. Amen? Amen. And then we will um, have service the next morning. Pastor, will we do service the same way we're going to do um, Christmas Day, or are we going to go back to normal? We're going to go back to normal. So we will have watch night service on the 31st from starting at 10 p.m., and then we will have service that next morning. We'll have Sunday school and service as normal. Amen? Amen. Again, those of you watching online, if you can be here, we'd be so happy to see you, happy to have you. If you've never even visited, we want you to come. We want you to come and be a part of the service right here. It's something about being here. Something about being here that feels so different than being at home. Amen? So if you are able, we, we, we implore that you come on out. We want to see you. Come as you are. And there is no, well, I'm going to come after I get myself together. There is no getting yourself together. There is no getting yourself together. You know, COVID now is going to be a part of our lives. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask and come on. You know, whatever you need. You need a little assistance, we're here to help you. If you got to bring your assistance with you, bring your assistance with you. Amen. But we want to see you. We want to see you. Um, we, we are appreciative that you are tuning in every Sunday. But we want to see you. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day. Okay. So those of you that have joined us online, again, we thank you for joining us. And um, again, you know, we're here, as uh, Sister Downport said. Again, if you'd like to join or be baptized and Again, it's not about being a member of True Light. It's about making sure you're connected to the Lord and Savior. And even if we have to write you a letter to go to another church where you can join, we're happy to do that. But again, we look forward to having you back because next Sunday, uh, as uh, Mother Fleming and I were talking, uh, there's something special about having Christmas Day on a Sunday. So we'll see you next week. Thank you.